come back to. But it's important to first understand that their experiences are surprisingly common. When we visited George Washington High School in Philadelphia, the girls told us that dating violence is something they see or hear about all the time. I have a girlfriend down the street, and it happened after eight months she went out with him, and she's, you know, really in love with this guy, and now it's starting. And there was no agreement among the guys that hitting girls is wrong. A lot of guys feel like they're dominated by other people, and maybe the only way that they can show their dominance is through slapping around their girlfriend to be so the, the girl knows that he's the boss. Let's say one of your buddies comes up to you and says, you know, Susie and I were out the other night on a date, and she was flirting with some other guy. And I told her to stop, and she wouldn't. And so I slapped her. And you know, it, it helped. What would you do? What would you say to him? I would agree with him. He had all the right to it. I can't see any reason why it would be justified for a guy to hit a girl. So I would have to totally disagree with that. Researchers say what those kids in Philadelphia told us about violence and dating, they've heard from teenagers all over the country, from normal, everyday kids. Recent studies have found that at least a third of all teenagers in the United States have had at least one violent experience in a dating relationship. And it's not just the guys who are doing the hitting. As the film Footloose accurately portrays. Is that where I get? Huh? One recent study found that half the time, girls initiate the fight. But the force they use is much milder. The serious injuries happen when guys attack their girlfriends. And according to experts, young men resort to violence for two reasons. One, because they somehow believe they have a right to hit. And two, because they want to control their girlfriends. What's sad is that often the violence seems to work. You get results when you're aggressive. The males learn that early on. Uh, you take my toy, I'll give you a good shot. Paul Bukovec and his colleague Lori Ward work for Family Service of Philadelphia, a private counseling agency. Both are experts on teenage violence. And we've planned a number of uh, programs on dating violence. At, uh, and for two years now, they've been going into high schools in Philadelphia to conduct workshops to try and stop the dangerous cycle of abuse. What constitutes abuse? Yes. They know that a slap or a shove at age 16 can be the beginning of a lifelong pattern. If this starts now, this is what the boys learn how to control girls. The girls, if they start accepting it, you're talking about, um, you know, 50 years of abusive relationships. Abuse in adult relationships is epidemic in this country. Experts estimate that at least every 20 seconds, an adult woman is beaten by her spouse. And they say that the teenage girls being hit or kicked by their boyfriends today are likely to find themselves in emergency rooms in 10 or 20 years injured by their husbands. And boys who are violent as teenagers will likely become the men who commit these crimes. How does the cycle start? In those relationships where people start with verbal and emotional abuse, there's a high correlation of those couples turning into more and more physical abuse. Verbal abuse is exactly how the violence started in the case of Anne and her boyfriend Jim. We've changed their names and altered her appearance with help from this makeup artist because Anne is afraid that she'll be ridiculed by her classmates if they know what she's been through. Anne says when she first started dating Jim they had lots of fun but the good times took a bad turn. Do you remember the first time he hit you? Yeah, he didn't like what I had on. And he told me to change, I told him I wasn't going to change. And he grabbed me and threw me on the ground. Almost every day we would fight and argue, and he would, like, rip my hair right out in front of my friends. What was he like after one of these incidents? He would start crying and tell me he loved me, and he never meant to do it. And it would never happen again. And you wanted to believe him? Right. What do you think Jim's violence, the way he treated you, did to your feelings about yourself? I didn't like myself very much. I thought, you know, that I deserved everything he gave me because he made me believe, you know, I was nothing. And so she stayed with Jim. Like so many victims of abuse, Anne came to believe that the violence was her fault. Jim kept Anne silent for almost a year by manipulating her emotionally and by threatening to harm her family if she told them. But one day, after Jim attacked her at school, Anne decided to tell her parents the entire story.
together, she and her mother began to search for help. They telephoned family service, and Lori Ward took the call. How has that been resolved at this point? Well, they are in the middle of uh, counseling, and now it's kind of helping this teenager rebuild her world. Anne not only broke up with Jim, she filed criminal charges against him for assault and harassment. Jim was ordered to have no contact with her for two years, or he'd face arrest. What advice would you give other young women who may right now be in the situation you were in a few months ago? To tell their parents to get help and to, you know, to break off with their boyfriend and, you know, stay far away as they can. Brian Fulton's story tells about the other side of the violence. He was the abuser, the guy his teenage girlfriends should have avoided. Brian grew up in an affluent suburb of Miami, where he still lives today. In high school, he was an honor student, studied the piano, and was active in student theater. On the outside, he seemed like a model student, but in his personal life, he was in deep trouble. By his sophomore year, he was already beating his girlfriends. How bad did it get during those teenage years? Well, God, I, I sure as hell wouldn't want it to get any worse. I was always very conscientious not to hit the girl in the face because I knew I didn't want that part of myself to be seen by the general public and my peers and stuff. But there was one time when uh, I really hit somebody in the... Uh, God bless her, she still talks to me. And um, I hit her right in the face and broke her nose. And I, I think that was one of the worst episodes I ever had. What seemed to trigger it? What kind of things would your girlfriends do? Spending more time someplace else instead of being with me on time, you know, not calling me when they said they're gonna call me. The most littlest, ridiculous type of things would, you know, be a catalyst to uh, me coming out with rage and you know, finally there would be a, uh, an earthquake. What kinds of things would you do afterwards to try and make up? Oh, a dozen long stem roses, going out to dinner, going to the movies. And promises that you'd never do it again. The big promise. Genuinely, in my heart, I really, you know, wish I could have kept that promise. Like so many teenagers,